Hey fellow tennis nerds, today I wanted to make a defense of classical rackets. I've talked a lot about and the need of power when you're playing better players, you need more power, you need more help from the racket. I did that in my beginners video, which makes sense. I mean, beginners, they need a, a bigger head size. And uh, I generally see players play with very, very demanding rackets. There are pros and cons to this, of course. And I've always been a guy kind of gravitating towards more control oriented rackets. And uh, it's quite hard for me to let go of them. I might be getting better results. Uh, I'm not quite sure with uh, more powerful rackets, but I have a hard time letting go. So a little bit of a defense for classical rackets. In this video, I compare a little bit three different rackets I brought out to the court yesterday. And uh, you could really see the difference. Uh, I could really feel the difference when playing with these rackets and also got some comments from my, uh, my opponent there uh, who, um, who I play with every week. And the three rackets I brought out uh, was the prototype from head, the new power line from head with the isometric head shape, somewhat customized because they come in really light. Uh, so they need some customization. But I do like this racket. It's, it's a very nice one, but it's power, spin, thick beam, 100 square inches, 1619 pattern. So if I had a ball machine, this could be a bit easier, but now I'm gonna do it myself, and then you'll see some footage of me hitting with these different rackets with an opponent. But uh, if you're looking at, at this kind of, it's a big head size, um, thick beam, this is gonna be, give you a good power. Generally, I feel like I have to add some spin to my shots when I'm doing this. So I, I need to, to hit the ball more like this, get a bit more windshield wiper motion, feel like I'm, I'm putting a little bit more spin on it. It's not as easy to just hit through it with a more flat stroke because I'm not gonna get the control. The ball's gonna sail a little bit. Uh, it, it might just shoot off a little bit. I'm not gonna get that kind of consistency I need to play good tennis. works there but in a match the ball might shoot off a little bit more let's compare it take the other side of the spectrum the control frame that's definitely not gonna be as easy to generate a lot of topspin with you have to hit more through the court and you see that with typical players like to play these rackets like Karatsev, Murray, Ivashka they all have a bit of a more uh, through the court motion a bit flatter ball trajectory All right, so let's look at the in-between racket, the Blade version 8, 16, 19. So a little bit of everything there. Not as flat of a trajectory, but a good, good control, better control, better control trajectory than the, than the tweeners. Small differences, but over time, as you're playing points, it's gonna build up and make a big difference to your game and your score. So this is where you have to find what kind of frame you like the most. You generally need to add a little bit more margin overall when you're playing with these frames. You can't go for the lines as much. The confidence will not be quite there. So either you add a lot of topspin or you add a little bit of margin when it comes to where you want to place your shots. And then the other side of the spectrum, we have the Head Pro Tour 2.0, one of my favorite rackets of all time. I actually think this 2.0 version is, is as good as the original, although a little bit different. The original has a little bit of a plusher feel, more precise sweet spot, but this one is very nicely controlled and a great frame on its own. I have noticed though that, that it, it is a little bit stiffer in the string bed, uh, so I probably prefer the older version overall, but this one is a little bit whippier and easier to use, so that's, that's why I go with this one. But this one is very much an old school frame. The mold is 30 years old pretty much used by so many pros on the ATP Tour. I've mentioned them before, Murray, Simon, young guys as well, like Poprin, Ivashka, they use this PT57A Head Pro Tour. Karatsev, another guy you might have seen, uh, that hits impressive pace and big swings, and that's so with a frame that's been around since the 90s. Pretty impressive, and it shows how good this frame is. They, they really did something right head back then. But this is very much low powered, control oriented. You need to provide everything yourself. You can't rely anything on the racket. But then there's loads of rackets that fall in the middle and there's obviously more extreme versions of the 95 that that was. Uh, there's 90 square inch rackets, although not sold today, but there are people who still enjoy to play with these very low powered, very precise rackets like the Wilson Pro Staff 85, the Head Prestige Classic 600, which is actually 89.5 square inches. So these frames are legends, 
but they're very demanding to use. But if you love that kind of, of racket and that's what you enjoy the most, play that racket, that's fine. I give you permission as a true tennis nerd to go and play that racket, enjoy it. Don't worry so much about other people telling you to switch racket. This is your tennis life and you know what you're getting out of the sport. So what's the thing with a small head size? The thing is, it's not gonna give you a lot of real estate to hit the ball. Uh, if you hit off center shots, you're gonna be punished, gonna hit the frame. That's gonna be the difficult part. It's gonna be tough to actually go and try to hit like this kind of windshield wiper swings that you see today in the modern game. You're not seeing that with these small head sizes. It's more of old school getting through the ball, really driving through the ball, allowing the weight of the racket to push through the ball. Uh, getting that top spin rotation or using more of a wrist technique is gonna be tough with a 360 gram racket. So uh, that's why you're not gonna see that, this kind of spec on the market, on the tour today. Also, if you're late on the ball, all this kind of, um, this lack of real estate here is gonna make be a problem to hit the ball and, and make sure you get clean contact when you're pushed out wide. So defending with any kind of mid-size frame today is, is very difficult. And that's why you don't see these a lot on the higher levels of tennis. Players are going more and more towards 98 and 100 uh, square inch head sizes, where you have a little bit more forgiveness, uh, a little bit easier to, to get the ball in play, get a little bit more lift over the net. Uh, yeah, when you're using this, you gotta kind of revert back a little bit to the more classical approach, playing more aggressively. You don't have many shots to, to hit. You have to reduce the number of shots slice uh, use the the rackets to its best of its abilities i mean serve slice aggressive game and then a volley to finish that's what you want to do we just look at what pete sampras did obviously you, not many players can have the serve of pete sampras just a, a massive weapon even the second serve come through with just massive pace but this frame yeah it does all those things well but over like over a one hour hitting you're gonna start feeling the weight because it's really sluggish but yeah great looking frame uh super fun to to play with it and uh, it's time to hit some balls. Uh, in between these two frames, I could have taken a radical, I could have picked up a Technifiber T5 305, but uh, in this case, this is pretty topical. It's the Blade version 898. This is the 1820, but there's also the 1619. And this one gives you a little bit more uh, compared to the Head Pro Tour, but doesn't have at all the power and the spin of the prototype uh, tweener so-called frame. Uh, that is kind of the standard of the of all rackets today. It's a hundred square inch, sixteen nineteen pattern thick beam racket. That's the standard. That's what most racket brands sell, and I think they sell the most of. Uh, but the blade is also a bestseller in its own right. And funnily enough, when Head reintroduced the Head Pro Tour 2.0, so many years after the release of the 630 or 280 in the US. Uh, it also became a bestseller. So many players wanted to feel how it is to play with this kind of icon in the game and it's still going strong. You're not gonna get the depth, you're not gonna get the pace for free, but if you can move well and you can generate pace on your own with good technique, this frame is as nice as it gets when it comes to giving you the ultimate control precision uh, for your game. So I still pick this one up from time to time and I still love playing with it. Some days it just feels too demanding and then I've gone over to my Prestige MP again or something more powerful like the Extreme Tour or the e guy I've talked about. Those frames give me a little bit more pace and a little bit more spin but not all the way to that frame or to a pure drive or you know those kind of powerful oriented frame Wilson Ultra 100 for example. I do know that I play my most confident and best tennis with something that is a bit more controlled. Some days it's this one, some days it's the Prestige MP and some days I need like an extreme tour. So when I play with this one you're gonna see a high launch, high trajectory. I really need to kind of 
manufacture the spin, change my swing a little bit. It's not coming 100% natural. I grew up playing with these very low powered control oriented 18, 20 patterns. I'm feeling most at home with the head pro tour, but I'm trying to see if maybe I can add a little bit more power, a little bit more, become a bit more dangerous. I'm, I'm not the biggest guy. I don't have the best technique. I need to figure out if I can get some help from the equipment. Sometimes I play really well with the tweeners, but most often I feel like they're a little bit too lively. I, I lose my confidence and I lose some control and then I go back to the kind of control oriented frames. Sometimes to a blade or a prestige MP or sometimes also all the way back to the head pro tour 2.0 uh, so it's all about to you and i give you permission to play with whatever feels good to you you might get better depth and spin with these tweener style frames whether it's a pure drive or an instinct or an ultra uh, all racket brands have these powerful rackets but if that's not your game if you just like the precision you want to feel the ball 100 percent play with a 90 square inch, play with the Head Pro Tour, play with what you enjoy. It's really up to you. If you will figure out what you play your best tennis with when it comes to competitive play, but maybe you just enjoy hitting the ball, practicing, getting exercise and enjoying that sensation of, of hitting. You can play whatever you like. You can bring a new racket every time and that's fine too. And I really think we all have to find our own path in tennis and that's usually quite connected to the racket. So if you really enjoy the sensation of hitting these classical old school frames with a buttery softer feel and usually smaller head size uh, go for it i think you should enjoy it you don't need to listen to most people telling you to play with a tweener frame or your coach or your sh local shop or me at times uh, just play with what you feel uh, does the job for you and uh, I, i'm really noticing these last couple of days i've been play testing and trying different types of frames I've been testing the Prestige MP quite a bit. I'm back to really enjoying that frame, but also testing these new more powerful frames and then something in between like the Extreme Tour, for example. And I, I do play my best tennis and most consistent tennis, I think, with the Prestige still. Uh, the Prestige or the Head Pro Tour, they kind of go a bit up and down, but uh, those two rackets just feel like very close to, to what I enjoy and uh, probably gonna stick with those frames uh, as it is and not switch to something more powerful or more spin friendly. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I, I will keep testing and uh, I will let you know what we have some interesting reviews coming up later this week. So keep your eyes peeled on this channel. What kind of racket do you enjoy? Is it a more of a tweener style powerful frame or do you like these old school control oriented rackets where you need to work more on the ball let me know in the comments below i'm really keen to hear your thoughts and your experience with tennis rackets and uh, if you want to support tennis nerd read more about these topics uh, join patreon.com slash tennis nerd and if you want to buy a tennis racket and support tennis nerd that way check out my affiliates the links are in the description below and don't forget to focus on your fitness i have some fitness uh, courses uh, check out the link below from my buddy nathan martin uh, fitness coach of leighton hewitt and so many other top players check out his fitness courses i think they're great they really help my game i've tried not only to change my game through rackets but also to work on my fitness my movement and i have more work uh, I'm, I'm always kind of managing injuries as well but i can really recommend not only getting stuck with rackets but also looking at the holistic view of you as a tennis player so there are a few other options there in the links below swing vision which is a great tool to to measure your strokes and, and so on so check them out in the description below well that's all have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis